Hey there, YouTube. Today, I'm going to talk about a little tour I did of Psyonix. Went on their podcast, and they gave me a rifle. So let's talk about it. Anyway, uh, I went down to Tucson and uh, took a look at Psyonix facility, which is relatively close to me, just a couple hours from where I live here. Um, and this is, well, I suppose, the parting gift that I walked away with. This is a 16-inch... Uh, a well, it's, it's a normal 16-inch rifle. Let me try to see, think what they did differently. They have a single-stage trigger in this. They ask about that. I believe everything else, what you see, is what you get. It's a 16-inch rifle with a single-stage trigger and a birdcage. Now, um, I have not previously shot psionic stuff. Uh, I've heard about it. Everybody says it's, what do they say? It's solid mid-grade. Is that what they say? It's just like, yeah, it's mid, but it's solid. It's like, uh, you know, on, on par with, you know, BCM or whatever. Uh, we're going to find out just how true that is. Um, I, I suspect looking the rifle over without even having shot it. That's how good I am. I suspect that it'll be just fine. Um, and from talking to the owner, um, just hearing his views, uh, and they're very similar to uh, my views as far as what we want the rifle to do. I want it to be very reliable. And then um, if they can gas it properly uh, after that, that's even better. And that seems to be the philosophy at Psyonix. So anyway, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to giving this rifle a go. And let me know in the comments, should I put a 510C on it or an AEMS or something else? I'm kind of leaning towards an AEMS for this rifle, I have one on my Alpine Research rifle, which I'm enjoying shooting. Um, and I have five tens all over the place. So I'm kind of thinking AEMS, unless one of you guys says I should get something, you know, wildly different. Something I haven't even thought of. Anyway, also while I was at Psyonix, like I said, I took I took a look around the facility. And the thing that struck me as interesting there is uh, the amount of rifles that they that they put through there. But it's a relatively small facility without a ton of employees. They don't do in-house machining, which I thought was, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a different philosophy. So looking at Alpine Research is a good example because I have one of their guns. Like all that shit's built in-house, all of it, with like like built by a mega nerd. Um, but this is a different philosophy. It's like, hey, we're gonna get these guys to send us precisely the stuff we need. We're not pissing around building it uh, or, uh, machining everything here. We're just going to assemble it, but we're going to make sure the parts are just right. It's a little different philosophy. Like I said, I thought it was interesting. And then if you're curious, I was on Psyonix podcast. I'd be, it was, it's kind of a long podcast. It was a little bit boring, but some of you nerds might like to check it out. So all in all, it was a nice tour of Psyonix facility. I appreciate them having me and I appreciate the rifle. Um, and I think it'll make for an interesting comparison because I believe there's an ADM rifle waiting for me up north when I get back up there with the Psyonix rifle here and the Alpine Research rifle. Those should be interesting to shoot and compare with kind of the, the baseline, the BCM. Uh, I think it'll be kind of an interesting discussion and comparison. Um, and then, I mean, maybe if we're feeling a little froggy, we can uh, compare that stuff to the arrow stuff, which... I'm not sure how that good that'd go for Arrow. But anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, there'll be more to come with the Psyonix rifle in the future. Um, probably in the winter when I get back to Arizona. It would be when I anticipate shooting it a lot.